Yeah. So last day we discussed basically uh, this example where this was my total Hamiltonian, this was my system part of the Hamiltonian, these were all the other oscillators which uh, construct my reservoir and this is my uh, system reservoir coupling. And with this we uh, saw sort of derived, uh, basically integrated out the dynamics of these oscillators. And we found that the density matrix for this, which says rho x, follows an equation which we derived the, uh, in the earlier lecture, which is the GPS equation, and also known as Lindner equation. Uh, this will again uh, evolve this, make this uh, density matrix evolve unitarily, whereas this part is not unitary. Uh, I mean, this part, in terms of the Hamiltonian, it will uh, result in a non Hamiltonian part, which basically results in the total evolution. Then we write, write this total thing as um, uh, in time, then OST evolution. This is the map between uh, system density matrix at time 0 and system density matrix at time 0. We finally arrived at this equation, which is uh, we found out that this is same as the GKS equation that we derived earlier from the perturbative analysis and uh, around p equals to 0, which we also made valid for our time series. Uh, it was a Markovian assumption. So, uh, this is the both one approximation uh, is about making the coupling between the system and reservoir weak, and Markovian approximation is to make this equation time local uh, such that in both sides everything that is acting on is basically acting on uh, the density matrix at the same time. And these lamas, and uh, I wrote down the expressions of these lamas, and in where, of course, the cosine population number is expression value. number for a particular frequency and temperature. And this gamma was. These are basically uh, system reservoir coupling. So, uh, one good thing about this equation is from here we can uh, get a rate equation. in a particular level, energy level n. Let's say if I write En, the probability En in this way for this particular oscillator, which is the system oscillator A diagram for A. We do that in the both of these sides. The equation that we find is this. All of these will be, of course, time dependent. So this n bar is again this equation number, but n is now denoting my just the number 
नेगेटिव नंबर क्या है कंसेंट होगा इमेज चेंज होगा These terms are corresponding to these events in the energy level system. This term gives me the uh, rate for going from in plus one level to n level. This term gives me uh, the rate for n minus one to n, and third term will give me yeah from n to n minus one, and fourth term will give me from n to n plus one. Uh, that you can figure out by whatever is multiplied here. The level variety going can be found by these these markers. And uh, if I go on and try computing, what also we have, we can do something else with this as well. We'll come to that later, but we can also compute certain expectation value of different operators. Let's say I'm trying to compute expectation value of a dot, which is basically what we write. This this can be shown in this way that this a dot dot means I'm in sort of parallel picture. If we don't know, we can write it as so using Heisenberg's equation of motion, which is that it has equals to r h comma v. I'm just expanding all of them this way. Then if you just play around with now, you also know that for uh, in the Schrodinger picture, the density matrix evolves in this way. To not also, you have to use the cyclicity of the phase. Then basically, we will be able to write this as if I use these two facts and use the cyclicity of phase itself, I will be able to write it as this. And this is nothing but again minus i h comma p. And if I now put here uh, the expression of rho dot that I found from here, just write everything down. Then again, uh, along the way, I will have to use the cyclic properties of phase and the fact that the E and A daggers follow this one. If I use those, I find this to come out like this. So for this I can make this all. In the level of the expectation level, I can write the evolution of the expectation level. So 
Similarly, we try computing the this thing, let's say the population number, the evolution of population number, and then again to get to such an equation that we find here. Again, we do the same steps, and what we find is basically which can be written as if I solve this equation, there is a particular constant number uh, outside here. So that will result in the time evolution of this thing. Now, this state where I take t going to infinity, 
this is where my dissertation sort of uh, has been happening for a long, long time with time to infinity, and it typically reaches a state which is called steady state, where the uh, system has come into some kind of equilibrium with my reservoir, and then to compute, uh, so that is corresponding to t going to infinity, we need steady state. On which uh, you can also think of this as after this point, at this point, uh, once it reaches this, we say, no ACS. You cannot tell me no. Let's say if I uh, redefine my t e equals to infinity as t e equals to 0, and I try again whether it evolves more and more or not, if I try checking that, then no t will always remain no ACS. So this state, steady state, has a uh, special is a special state which does not evolve uh, in terms of this Lagrangian operator anymore. And this map that we had in terms of LT, it becomes our identity operator when it acts on uh, particularly this particular state. So to compute the steady state, what what typically does is puts this. Uh, this will not change anymore. So, so will this. So, this we can put 0. And if we put 0 in the left hand side, what we get from the right hand side equations, let's say we get Pn plus 1 is If I keep solving this uh, recursively, like for n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, and so on, starting from, let's say, uh, n equals to 0, if I take n equals to 0, and of course I don't have a, uh, if I take n equals to 0, this term will not be present because there is nothing called p minus 1, then you take beyond uh, 0 and 0. You find that p1. This is B2 again on this. So generally, Pn will be just uh, the value of the plus 1 to the power of n. Now we also know that these are sort of the probability of being at different levels. So this should definitely come up to be 1. And if we put this expression, let's say I call P0 like to be something like 1 minus A, then this is just uh, mean sum over n bar over n bar plus 1 will be equal to n into 1 minus a. And then this will be equal to n. And this will come out to be just Also, go uh, down previously. This was my remember 
and then PL the serial comes out to be by use this expression. There will be some H cut or This in fact uh, agrees these E and probabilities if we look at. Firstly, we already noted that at time going to infinity, it not, does not decay to does not decay to zero, but this is becomes just n bar, which is a function of omega c and p. So this looks like a occupation number for a uh, system which is at temperature t and uh, frequency omega c, which is just the frequency of the system. Similarly, these pns will be same as pns of probabilities derived from just a thermal density matrix. In equilibria at temperature T. But remember that this temperature T particularly came into the picture from past temperature. So, what this essentially means is that at time infinity, this uh, my system has reached the steady state where it behaves just like the equilibrium density matrix. This time, this my density matrix, and so this has come to uh, come to have an equilibrium with the reservoir as well. System acknowledges the has acknowledged the temperature of the bar. Okay, so now we have discussed a little bit about the steady states. It will be now interesting to compare whatever dynamics. So, this uh, Lindbergh equation or GKC equation is actually useful because it helps us to study the time dynamics of the particular system state. There are other machineries which one can use to study the properties of the steady states where one does not need to use von Markovian approximation or uh, assumptions like. Small system bath coupling and time locality coming from Marco Vianney, but one can study an exact uh, steady state property. But the uh, uh, upshot of this GKS equation was that this uh, helps us to study the time dynamics as well. So let us now discuss uh, machinery where we can study the still study the. Uh, Steady state properties exactly without any assumption on the uh, system bath coupling or the Markovian assumption kind of thing. So, which is called the quantum Langley equation. Study. It should be a non perturbative uh, way of studying these steady state properties. Uh, we cannot really study the system dynamics that you are looking at from the new equation. So, we have to now discuss uh, cases where we integrate out the environmental degrees of freedom to get the system density matrix and study the uh, dynamics of that. Now, what we will do is we will uh, deal with full equations of motions and somewhere we will uh, integrate out the properties of the path. But not really integrate out in the level of the density matrix of state, but in terms of just uh, in the level of the operator, the expectation value of which I am concerned about, and the steady state properties of which I want to look at. Basically, I will mean, uh, integrate and use the integrated version of the equation of motion of the reservoir degrees of freedom and use those 
integrated out with the observer degrees of freedom equation of motion inside the system equation of motion. That is uh, what is called Langevin equation, okay. Where Langevin equations will come. But in general, these Langevin equations are basically just uh, certain inhomogeneous differential equation. Say something of this kind, you could have some A multiplied by W dot P plus B T C is equal to it. Here you have certain uh, let's say GT, which is the function of time and date. So you can treat this part of the thing as a homogeneous part by taking the zero and then consider this thing to solve this inhomogeneous differential equation. Separately, and those equations also appear uh, regularly in the study of classical uh, Brownian particles moving in a fluid, let's say water or some fluid in fluid dynamics and so on. But in, we will see how these come in here uh, quantum step. So we had this system Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian and the HSR, all of those things. Uh, the Heisenberg equation of motion for the full Hamiltonian, for let's say this A and RJ kind of operators that we had, will just be the full thing. Here, this Hamiltonian is the sum of all of these things. So these are sort of my reservoir equations of motion. And these are by system equations of motions fully under full Heisenberg picture. We have, uh, have not yet integrated out the reservoir or anything. But what we will do is formally integrate. So this is the integral differential equation that we you remember we talked about in the uh, early stages of where uh, we were talking about uh, how the system evolves or how the observer evolves a little bit memory and so on. So here we haven't, remember that here we haven't assumed anything about small system reservoir coupling or any other things. Everything is written in the most general form here. We formally integrate this thing uh, again in terms of just, see, in terms of just uh, feed this term as a homogeneous term new differential equation and this term as a inhomogeneous term. All of these depend on time. Then the resulting equation of motion for RJT, we are integrating out this, uh, integrating this equation of motion which we will use back in this equation. Then the second term will actually, this homogeneous part will result in a bit more complicated form. has to be less than the final time where I am trying to write down my RJ here. RJ starts from some T0, but 
this is what this basically happens due to the coupling between A and R J. So that's why you have to should see look at any derivation of this uh, integration of inhomogeneous differential equation and then you find this thing. Another way of doing it is part is that you can think of this as coming from a uh, non-equilibrium Green's function. There's a, another way of deriving the same thing to the non-equilibrium Green's function. And basically if you derive that for different this kind of Hamiltonians for system, you'll again find the same expression. Now if we plug this RJT expression inside here, in this expression, let's say 1 and this is 2. Plug 2 in 1. Then what we find is the expression of motion for uh, this thing right here. So the speed of the T equation simply becomes This equation is basically what we will call this uh, quantum Langevin equation. Well, this part basically uh, again involves this uh, a dot t just for uh, this part is corresponding to the unitary evolution. And these two parts basically result in certain fluctuations and dissipation. So, particularly this alpha term, this results in the dissipation. Caused by again, this fluctuation and dissipation is caused by the effects of the reservoir because this alpha and beta are carrying this couplings and uh, yeah. These are carrying the companies which are sort of the effects of reservoir and also this reservoir frequency and so on. This will cause this is known as the dissipation term and this is known as the fluctuation term. Due to which you can sometimes this equation is also called the fluctuation dissipation equation. But these are again just some operators and uh, things like those where you are, we are using Heisenberg equations of motion. But uh, this nothing, uh, no real time dynamics of a state that we can study in this way. For studying a state dynamics, we again always need to get rid of the or trace out the path degrees of freedom to get to a system density matrix and so on. The procedure that we followed earlier. So this procedure doesn't help much. Time dynamics are cannot be captured. Time dynamics. But what it does is that uh, it can, so here we haven't assumed anything about uh, small system bar coupling or anything. So what it helps is it can uh, help us in studying steady state properties. Which is uh, 
do so, what we have to do is we take this T D O going to minus infinity, and uh, so which means that uh, we are assuming that my system and path were coupled at T is going to minus infinity. It is like a scattering problem which uh, we are looking at from minus infinity to taking this T to plus infinity as well. And if we take this t zero and t to minus infinity and plus infinity, what happens is that these things help us in writing these terms or these equations in terms of their Fourier transformed version of the same equations. So where the Fourier transforms are within the frequency space and don't confuse, you get confused with this tilde notation. This is not for the interaction picture or anything. This is just my Fourier transform thing for so any observable or any quantity. Uh, just going back to a Now, uh, what I can do is I can uh, use this Fourier transform version of everything that I have in this equation. Of course, for a dot p, I will also, when I Fourier transform for a dot p, from there, the uh, integration by parts, I can again write that expression in terms of the Fourier transform of a. So, the final equation in the Fourier transform version will turn out to be that equation. This alpha is different for A. This is a vector expression. This alpha. Alpha, the alpha, and uh, from here I can get an expression of a dot omega in terms of this alpha and beta, which will be just this. If I want to compute, let's say, again compare with my uh, steady state value of the operation number, this thing that we have. This is was at time equals to infinity. This was just like omega with omega c t. If I want to compare this value, what I have to do is I have to compute an expectation value of this time. Uh, now I will, what I will use is these things. If I use them, this part will remain as it is, but this will become. Star. 
So what we need is basically expressions of compute this uh, expectation value. We need values for these things and this one. So the way to do so is again we have transformed these equations, the expressions of alphas and beta that I wrote here. If you do that, uh, you find that this beta tag and beta is so this is where when we come uh, this Fourier transformation or from here to uh, from this beta to this beta, where this EJ star information goes in, omega j information goes in, and uh, therefore the information about the box temperature enters there in this state. This in dot in bar enters in this expression here, and there is another beta uh, uh, pi. Some delta function. This kind of uh, where this eta is again something that we wrote down in terms of some other expression in the previous day. So we get uh, this to be like this one, and similarly alpha also we can get. Delta is the lamp sheet that we had uh, written in the previous day, which is a very much part of the definition of this kind. And my final expression of the That we are doing is uh, here a sort of for steady state because I am taking this, these period transforms for which I needed to uh, take t0 equals going to minus infinity and t going to plus infinity. So, this expression, whatever you get, is a for a steady state, and this expression comes out to be a form. Now we know that the same steady state in the bond Markovian approximation we got to be just uh, in bar omega C T. If we carefully take the carefully take the system bar coupling to zero, now what is uh, for that we have to we have changes in this part of the integration. This involves this uh, k omega square, this involves this delta, which also involves the k omega square and so on, and again this plus square. What happens if you uh, take this k omega going to zero limit, means the k is going to zero limit, which is the this limit here. Then in this limit, this again becomes in C. And 
and how does that happen? So if you uh, do this calculation, what you find is that uh, this particular function in this limit t going to zero will just become a delta function of this kind. So this just picks up this fact, this function, and uh, add value omega c. Although I should also say that uh, so this is sort of only we have done the uh, bond approximation here, right? So k going to zero. But actually, doing so somewhere uh, along the way, the Markovian approximation is also needed, and the Markovian approximation here would mean that this function, if this function is too sharp. Cannot really act with a delta function and give me some nc kind of thing. So, this n bar omega function also has to be fairly smooth. Which has inside it actually uh, what can show that this will definitely involve, will not go into detail, but this will involve the Markovian assumption. So again, from this expression, this was done for uh, just looking at we were looking at steady state property for general most general case, no assumption for system bar companies or Markovian. But the expression that we find, if we systematically take the bond and Markovian limit uh, and if those hold, then it, we can check that this agrees with the bond Markovian. Steady state uh, operation number is that. So, although uh, this time dynamics is hard here, uh, although almost impossible to do with the quantum language equation, but it is valid for all system work problems and it is a non quarter way to check this thing. The, there are two upshots for both the two things. If you, let's say, are varying your system bar coupling mm -hmm. along the way, but not looking at time dynamics. You just want to know if you uh, change your system bar coupling. If you increase the system bar coupling, how does the steady state properties change? Then what you will find is that, uh, let's say this is your coupling, and this is your some steady state expectation value. For the large time, this will for small system bar couplings, it will completely agree with its a dotted line, which is the quantum master equation goes at, or GK is a result. So, the solid line is for quantum language equation, and the dotted line is for the quantum master equation. Then, after some point, this will start deviating from each other. This, uh, this is just a plot which was something. This is not an exact plot, but there is a, such kind of deviations. I'm not saying that this will always go up and this will always come down and such things. But they will deviate from each other as we go uh, higher in system bar companies. So, if we want to look at a system or uh, evolution of system of steady state properties, where, which is more general and which is valid for all system bar companies, then quantum. Language equation is the way to go, but if uh, we want to study the for small system bar coupling, we want to study the time dynamics, then uh, GKSL equation or the Linda equation is the way to go. And so there are both pros and cons of these things, these two methods. Uh, also, the fact that the GKSL equation was a perturbative equation of motion. For the state evolution or operator evolution of this uh, system operators or system state, whereas this is for this is a completely non perturbative way to look at the operator evolution uh, of this certain states, uh, certain, not certain states, but certain quantities uh, in the non perturbative sense, and uh, particularly useful for studying this steady state property. So, for example, in from an experimental point of view, these are the way from which one studies the uh, various means, variances for uh, arbitrary system bar coupling and can pick up things uh, 
which we had in the GPS equation as well, which we can use later in the GPS equation to study the perturbative uh, dynamics of my state, system state. For example, we had this uh, gamma in bar, in bar in plus one and such things in my rate equation. These gammas are picked up from, uh, from in the experimental sense by solving these equations or comparing experimental results with solutions of these equations and picking up means, variances and so on. Uh, we can specify what those gammas will be. Those gammas were, for example, uh, in that equation, the uh, gamma alphas that we had, which sort of uh, were again representing the couplings between system and bar in some non trivial way, not exactly in this term of this A's, A omegas. But to exactly know about how those couplings are, uh, comparing with quantum Langevin equation result is. Then we saw that for the CPTP maps, uh, GPSL here tells us that any CPTP map can be characterized by something called the uh, operator sum representation, Gauss operator sum representation. The quadratic version of which is the GPSL equation along the way we have taken this bond map of approximation. Uh, so this another way of course that means a bond map will be in bound as well. Where this memory content will be non-trivial. Uh, not, so it is not equal to the thirty minus t prime or the memory is uh, long lived. There it will be non markovian systems. Then we studied this GPS equation and uh, we studied particular model. Uh, for example, this where one boson, boson oscillator is my system and these are uh, infinite to many or finite to many. Large maybe some operators, oscillators. Of course, you also had a system bar complete, part which made this equation of linear and the dynamics non unitary. Uh, we saw that this, from a microscopic derivation point of view, we can again get back to the GKS equation uh, if there is a way to go into it. We discussed along the way where specifically we are making these assumptions of weak coupling that is bond and this uh, rho p minus tau, if you remember, going to rho t, 
in the limit where reservoir time scale is much much less than the system evolution time scale. So the path relaxes many times by the time where the system density matrix changes uh, significantly. And today we saw so from here we were also able to study the steady state dynamics. Not really steady state dynamics, steady state property. And uh, from a different perspective, completely different perspective, which is one perturbative way. So, the part of Langerian equation, which in fact will be useful in our future lectures as well when we discuss this finger bending standard study. There is the fluctuation equation. Uh, equation and so on will again come into the picture. Here also we can study steady state property. To be good for uh, an exact study. And then we take bond and Markovian limit. We can again be back to the it were the same result that we, but we got from, from the GKSL study. Uh, so there are, I basically described this one model of uh, one bosonic operator and many bosonic operators case. There were other interesting models. Uh, for example, we just briefly mentioned a couple of them. One could be a case where some interesting model could be, where I have two oscillators as my system oscillators and uh, these are all my bath operators. In the left side, let's say this is my A1, this is my A2 kind of oscillator and A1, A2, infinite XAB, infinite J. In the left hand side I can have. And in the right hand side again I can have something like infinite J. Let's denote them as some R1, R2 kind of relation and relation of this, and R1 integral and then as well. The couplings, the non trivial thing about this is that there will be a coupling between these two system oscillators as well, and this system operator uh, will be coupled to this A1 oscillator only, and A2 will be coupled to this uh, reservoir through this R1 operator only. In that case, also. But one can do is uh, one can instead of dealing with these uh, degrees of freedom of these operators L1, R1, the operators, one can go to the eigen modes of these uh, reservoir operators. And then what happens is this boils down to again the problem that we studied. That is this uh, where so here the non-trivial thing was this A uh, or integer operators were coupled to reservoir operators of all sides. We had this kind of thing. We have an RJ or sum over J over. So if you go to eigen modes of this left and right reservoir operators, we can again prepare such a sum over expression. So the problem will look similar in that case. And uh, in fact, but there will be one difference since there is also coupling, this is the most not linear fact that there is coupling between these two oscillators within the system as well. So you will not be able to write this steady state thing as simply something like in C or 1 omega C uh, T. It will become a little bit more non trivial so it is a good non trivial problem to study. Uh, another a uh, couple of interesting problems are when instead of, uh, let's say we can do something like this, instead of coupling one bosonic oscillator, we can couple a spin like this sigma z to again a sum of bosonic oscillators. This is called the spin boson model, spin boson decreasing model. And the coupling part will be. 
we have a few more lots of moments. So, and the final one thing about which you might have the name of which model you might have heard, the genes coming slowly. That also means all of these things can be done. And uh, there the model is simply take, instead of taking many, many oscillators, you simply take one spin and one oscillator. So you can treat either this as your system or this as your system. And your system path coupling will again be something like plus and plus. So the Jane's coming in models has an exact solution. You can see that you can check that uh, what is interesting to check is that it's exact solution and the GPS equation in the bond of uh, bond Markovian approximation limit again matches. So indeed, all of these models what they teach us is that uh, they give us a way to sort of in some cases it is easy to do an exact solution and then we can match the GPS equation to really see that my numerics is or whatever equation uh, this is, this is giving me uh, right results. And uh, from all of these different models, we can learn different things as well. Uh, but this was sort of the GPS education and open quantum system part of this lecture. Uh, from next day onwards, I will try to using this, uh, not really necessary in this, but other uh, things which will also involve this fluctuation discussion kind of idea. Uh, I try to discuss this open quantum field theory techniques where what happens if I have a field theory which is which has an environment where can we in which cases can we integrate out the environment which will be again similar to what we have here that uh, the, the best cases where we can integrate out the environmental degrees of freedom and still study the system dynamics is where my environment is weakly coupled to my system and uh, but within itself, uh, we just look at the environment part. Environment part. It is best to consider uh, strong coupling between the within the components of the environment. So what that again makes sure is that. The strong coupling within the environment sort of makes it like a thermal environment and uh, this again will make the make our assumption about Markovian assumption, Markovian T2 which is uh, environmental time scale will be far from less than the system evolution time. So we will uh, see these things and there will be some different methods that we will have to assort to which are called as finger field age and final burner which function as and so on. So yeah, we will learn about those stuff from this lecture.